The invisible wall is a strange thing already that we all know about in video games. However, there's some particularly odd ones out there. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the 20 craziest invisible walls in video games. Starting off at number 20, SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom, where it's actually pretty easy to go out of bounds in this game. You know, most of the main locations from the show are accurately represented, and they're pretty much all just buildings sitting on the middle of nowhere. Most players eventually try to wander past the little dotted line showing where the barrier is, and if you stay outside for too long, a literal live action hand will appear and take you back to the checkpoint. It's called, in the credits, Hans the Live Action Hand, and it's appropriately surreal for the show, and it's used perfectly in this game, actually making an invisible wall that, while very weird, makes sense. And number 19 is Splashdown, where normally you can't go too far out if you're playing Splashdown. If you wander too far from the track during a normal race, you just get a wrong way warning. But if you're playing in free roam mode, you can go out as far as you want, just going off on your own little journey, driving a jet ski, you know, out on the open water. But then a giant tentacle appears and throws you back on track. And number 18 is Far Cry 6, a game with a pretty clever solution when you go too far out. Instead of just putting a wall or automatically teleporting you back, they actually make it into a story thing. Anytime you take a boat or a plane to the edge of the map, you get an, a, a message warning that you're leaving Yara, the island the game takes place on. And they're not kidding about it. If you keep going, you'll trigger the secret ending where your character is just relaxing on the beach in Florida while the radio talks about how the resistance has been crushed on Yara. As far as invisible walls go, it's probably one of the funniest and best in terms of connecting it to the actual story of the game. Has ended in Yara. President Anton Castillo announced that Clara Garcia, the leader of the terrorist group Libertad, was killed by his special forces. And number 17 is the Family Guy game, a another good one. Early on, you run into an invisible wall that blocks you from going down the street. Pretty standard stuff, but there's a mime nearby acting like there's a wall there. Get close to it and Peter Griffin will complain about stupid mimes and their invisible walls, which is actually a pretty funny way of playing with the invisible wall trope. You obviously can't go past the mime's invisible wall. And number 16 is Motocross Madness, slash MX Unleashed, slash ATV Off-Road Fury 2, slash MX vs. ATV Untamed, all by the same developer, all with this same particularly ridiculous invisible wall. If you do manage to get past some of the steep inclines from around the edges of certain races, an invisible force will just suddenly throw you back onto the racetrack while a cartoon bomb dropping effect sound plays. It's actually a borderline easter egg because it's, it's genuinely funny and also sometimes more fun to screw around with than the actual race. And number 15 is Sunset Overdrive. For a game as irreverent as this one, it's no surprise that they poke fun at the concept of invisible walls. When you get close to the edge of the map, either near the city walls or just by swimming out in the ocean, an actual force field will materialize that literally says it's an invisible wall. In this case, it actually makes some sense because the Fizco company is trying to keep the mutant zombie outbreak in the city a secret, so keeping everybody trapped inside makes a certain amount of sense. Of course, the fact they're literally called invisible walls is of course a joke. And number 14 is Subnautica, a game that seems like it goes on forever, but there's actually an edge to the explorable area called the Crater's Edge. You're actually on top of a volcanic crater, meaning the whole game area is sort of stuff on a big plateau, you know? When you get out, the whole thing just leads to an endless expanse of open water. Wander two out from there, and the game will spawn these ghost leviathans, which are incredibly dangerous, and there's basically nothing you can do about them. The only way to avoid getting eaten by them, in fact, is to leave the Crater's Edge, which they immediately leave you alone if you enter a new biome, which makes them very conveniently well-behaved, very scary sea monsters. And number 13 is Golden Sun. Now, most invisible walls are either unexplained or have some kind of danger to keep you away, but not in this game. Instead, your path is blocked by puppies. Early in the game, right in the starting town, there's a direction they don't want you to go in, and to stop you, instead of putting up a warning sign or a villager or something, there's a group of puppies, and when the player approaches, they say something like, there are some puppies playing over here. We should let them be. It's probably the cutest and also one of the silliest invisible walls ever made. 
And number 12 is Sea of Thieves. Uh, the border in this game isn't quite so friendly. If you ever take your ship and sail off the map, the water slowly turns red and the skies turn dark. If you keep going, your boat just starts to break down and eventually sink, and it leaves you exposed to the shark infested waters, which are demonic at this point. There's not really any explanation offered, but it is not something that I would want to live through. And number 11 is Far Cry 2, which has a pretty obvious explanation for why your character doesn't want to do a lot of wandering around. They have malaria, so you need access to medicine if you want to, you know, actually live. Occasionally your character suffers malaria attacks during the story, which also seem to have any of you wander too far outside the map. If you're on foot, you'll just collapse and wake up back in the map area, where if you're driving, the game sort of just awkwardly fades out after a while. Same thing happens, you wake up in the map area. Area, but the vehicle is gone. And number 10 is Serious Sam 3, a series known for really large open areas, and in previous games they like to hide secrets out in the distant corners of the map, so it's likely somebody playing this game might want to see what happens when they walk out in the Egyptian desert. They probably did not expect what happens though. A giant sandworm busts out of the ground and just kills you instantly, and there's no way to actually fight it, it's just there to kill you and that is it. But the game likes to hide secrets that are just outside the edge of the map, so if you want to get all those secrets you gotta be quick. And number nine is The Darkness, a game set in the city, so there aren't a lot of places they could put invisible walls except for the subway. If you're feeling adventurous, it's possible to go down these tunnels, and eventually the darkness warns you to turn back if you go far enough, but if you keep going, the screen just turns dark before a train appears out of nowhere and runs you over. It's actually pretty clever. And number eight is Valheim. A lot of survival games have procedural maps that just keep going on forever, but Valheim has a pretty solid endpoint to its map. If you manage to get a longboat, then it's possible to head outside the bounds of the world where the water gets very turbulent. It's tough going, but if you keep heading outside, you'll eventually hit the literal edge of the world. In Valheim, at least, flat earth is real, and if you get too close, the current will just suck you right off the edge. And number seven is the Talos Principle. Uh, the start of this game is pretty mysterious. All you've got is a voice in your head and a big open world to wander around in. And in certain areas, it's pretty easy to wander outside the main area of the map. Get too far off course, and Elohim, the voice of God in your head, will start repeating this message, basically telling you to turn back. Your vision then starts to glitch. His voice gets louder and louder, the further out of bounds you go, until the game just finally kills you and resets your position. To explain this one fully would be a spoiler for the game, but there is a reason why this happens. Like, it's a plot justified invisible wall, which is something, again, we don't really see a whole lot of. At number six, certain Halo 3 multiplayer maps do something a little different for invisible walls. Most games just give you a warning message and a countdown, but if you wander out of the arena on Sand Trap, you'll have to deal with constantly exploding landmines. If you have a vehicle, it's actually possible to avoid them, at least for a little while. Another similar map actually has a skull hidden outside the map. While in Snowbound, there's turrets that will shoot at you if you go beyond the barrier. Like, step outside the boundary and alarms will sound and these giant plasma turrets will just start blasting at you, which is a pretty good incentive to stay on the map. And number five is the Jack and Daxter series. All three of the Jack and Daxter games have something in it to keep you from going too far off the map. In the first game, there was a lurker shark that would appear if you went out onto the water with a faux Jaws soundtrack that plays and everything. Second game, perimeter defense robot. While in the third game, if you try to swim out too far in the lake, a giant purple tentacle will appear to stop you. They're all silly and memorable, which is, I mean, that's, that's cool. And number four is Paper Mario, the Origami King. Uh, another cute one. Uh, one chapter is all about exploring this area called the Great Sea. Like, it's a huge open area, but if you do go outside the map, the game will stop you by having a giant blooper appear, holding a sign with a red X on it. He, he blocks any and all progression from that point. It's basically an invisible wall, but it's kind of funny because it's a Mario character holding a big sign with a red X on it. It's, 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 it's more charming than just an invisible wall. 
And number three is Resident Evil, kind of a classic one. In Resident Evil, a lot of players' first instinct is to just leave the mansion. Now, you can try, but if you try to open the front door, there's a short cutscene that plays showing a bunch of zombie dogs blocking your escape. And if you're playing the remake, one of them even gets inside, so opening the door actually makes things worse for you. After killing the dog, your character will just straight up refuse to try to open the door again. So this is the game's way of saying like, oh yeah, you're trapped in here, don't, don't do that. You don't wanna go out there. At least in here, you you don't have to run from dogs all the time. Out there, you're gonna have to do that. And number two, we've got Spore, which during the creature stage, when you've got direct control of a single creature on the land, it's possible to swim out into the water if you want, but it's also probably not a good idea. If you get too far from the land, a short cutscene will play, which shows a gigantic sea monster swallowing your critter whole. Of course, that doesn't actually kill it. Your creature appears back on the shore safe and sound, but they really make sure, you know, to stay out of the water. And finally at number one is Mother 3, probably the most ridiculous invisible wall of all time. There's a lot of moments in RPGs where the game won't let you go in certain directions and Mother 3 is no exception. The difference is that instead of just having a generic, I don't want to go that way message or someone blocking your way, uh, instead you start going in a direction the game doesn't want you to go, you get this message. There are ants at your feet. You might accidentally step on them, so please don't continue in that direction. The Mother games have an unusual sense of humor to say the least, and I would say this is kind of a perfect example this explanation of why you can't continue and that's all for today leave us a comment let us know what you think if you like this video click like if you're not subscribed now's a great time to do so we upload brand new videos every day of the week best way to see them first is of course a subscription so click subscribe don't forget to enable all notifications and as always we thank you very much for watching this video i'm falcon you can follow me on twitter at falcon hero we'll see you next time right here on game ranks